No. Okay. Well, I guess that means to call this meeting to order. Welcome to the Bloomington Rotary Club's weekly celebration of service for January 5th, 2021. Woohoo! Our first meeting of the year and six months into me being your president. Thank you for letting me have the opportunity. Uh, thank you for being here. Michael, will you please show the flag graphic for 15 seconds of respectful silence to open our meeting? Please remain on mute and take this time to personally reflect. Thank you. And now I will introduce myself to offer the reflection for today. I only have a brief reflection because we have a lot of things going on today, but it is our club forum. And so I wanted to remind you, like others have done before me, of a resource that you all have coming to your mailbox every month in the Rotary Magazine. This issue was particularly wonderful in my opinion. They're all very good and I try to read them when I have the time. But this issue featured a quite long, let me get to my paper clip here, uh, spread of articles on the future. So it, it reflects on the past uh, centennials and bicentennials and semi quasicentennials and all of those. And it reflects on the future. So it goes through ph philanthropy and reading and water and all of these wonderful topics. And I suggest looking through, you already have this, should be coming directly to you. If we don't, we'll get it sorted out, but pick up your copy and just peruse. There's so much information about what other clubs are doing and what Rotary International is doing. And I recommend giving it a look. And one quote that I particularly loved from an article that I found delightful, laughter always gets more laughter. Even with people we are meeting for the first time, it creates bonding. And this gentleman here encourages us to stand in front of the mirror and laugh for two whole minutes straight. And I tried it. And let me tell you, it was very awkward, but about halfway through, I couldn't help but continue that spirit through the rest of the day. So take his advice, try it out. And there's always a little tidbit or something like that in this magazine. So. You can read that for yourself, read more about this fine gentleman and the future in your Rotary Magazine. I don't think with I that, it. we'll move on to the introduction of guests for today. We have one guest, District Governor Jessica Hain has joined us for a special announcement and to join us as a Rotarian for our meeting. Welcome. And I don't see any other guests, but if I'm missing anyone, please speak up. <laughs> okay, I think that's all for today. Thanks to our producers, Michael Shermis, Natalie Blaze, Sally Gaskell, and Aaron Davis for making everything run so smoothly on the Zoom screen. And our roundabout reporter for this week is Kyla Cox Decker. Thank you for cataloging our events. Birthdays, Matt Stitzinger, January 8th and quite a few membership anniversaries. Gus Chicalis, five years. Owen Johnson, six years. Scott Shackelford, three years. Kyla Cox Decker, nine years. And Jim Shea, also nine years. Thank you for being a part of the Rotary family. We have one uh, announcement that I saw uh, before the holiday Rotarian Glenn Steenberger was quoted in a story about Bloomington High School South senior Sydney Anderson, one of the nation's first female Eagle Scouts. For her Eagle Scout project, Sydney worked on a meditation trail at the Tibetan Mongolian Buddhist Cultural Center in Bloomington, and her project included building a bridge, trailblazing to mark the trail, and working on erosion control. So fascinating. Look back into the December 21st, I think, article of the HT uh, to check that out and uh, to see 
some quotes from our very own Glenn Steinberger. Any other Rotarians in the news that I that I missed in the last few weeks? Anybody have anything to report? Any personal accomplishments to brag about? No? Okay. <laughs> well, on that note, let's go right into some happy dollars. Share any happy news that we've had and we've got a lot of backlog of weeks here. So I'm, I'm guessing that people have some happy news to share, holiday joy or something of that nature. Go ahead. I have some happy news. Um, I actually, two things. Uh, we are moving forward into the Martin Luther King Jr. season of volunteering. And uh, rather than a day of volunteering at my sister's closet, we are sponsoring 40 days of peace in very small groups because of COVID. Uh, we have an electrostatic filter on site at my sister's closet. So it's a safer place to be than most places in Bloomington. If you're interested in volunteering, it is a happy place and we would love to have you. And I promise you will walk away feeling very, very rewarded. Every hour on the hour, we do ask the volunteers, one of them has chosen to stand up and read an MLK quote from our selection and a loud voice so that everybody could hear it and the entire room breaks out in applause afterwards. It's really fun. And um, the other happy dollar that I am sending is that uh, my sister's closet is still looking for two full-time positions um, that uh, really make a big difference in our organization. You can find those on the Get Involved page under Careers at My Sister's Closet at sisterscloset.org. If you know anyone that wants to make a difference in a woman's life, it's very, very rewarding. Anyway, that's my deal. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks, Sandy. Hmm, I'm just trying to remember. Well, while Charlotte remembers, I will just quickly chime in to say that I'm very happy to be back um, after having been away for a while. Uh, I, actually, I was here in Bloomington, but I've been teaching at this time every Tuesday. And so the demographics of the people that I see on the screen in front of me have changed and shifted somewhat. But I'm um, and I'm very, very thrilled to see you all once again um, and, and very happy to be here. Also, just to mention that I'm, I'm thrilled to have had my family. My two daughters were, were with us, Catherine and Gabrielle, over the break. It was just spectacular to spend time with them in a quiet place here in Bloomington. So that was really wonderful. Lots of epic chess matches with Catherine. I have some wonderful news, which is that um, the project that I've managed at, at Indiana University for about a dozen years, the Strategic National Arts Alumni Project, um, received a grant for $650,000 from the Andrew W. Yeah. Mellon Foundation, uh, which will enable us to do an, uh, uh, an annual, or uh, sorry, a national survey of all of arts alumni in the year 2022. All arts alumni everywhere? All arts alumni everywhere? Are all arts alumni. You just have to have graduated from a participating institution. Really? Wow, that's yeah. going to be major. So we're estimating that well over 100 institutions will participate. Perfect. Amazing. Any other happy dollars? You know, the other day I was someplace and I thought, that's really wonderful. I'm going to make that into a happy dollar. And now I can't remember. Oh, so, darn. So I'm going to give... I'm going to give a happy dollar to my bad memory and hope that it comes forward. Well, when you remember, we will we'll circle back to you. Yeah. But I don't want to withhold the happy dollar. I just want to add the piece to it. <laughs> Any others? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll I'll give a uh, a happy five dollars to uh, my daughter and her fam husband and and two little toddlers who moved uh, during the Christmas uh, just before Christmas 
from uh, the West Coast to South Carolina. They're now in the Charleston, South Carolina area from California. So to take it, uh, her husband took a new job there and they now have a house with a backyard and a sandbox and a swing set. And they are so thrilled coming from a, a smallish apartment in, in California. So hallelujah. That's wonderful. And no one got COVID as far as we know. Right. Any others to share? Ashley, I will. I, I want to give a happy dollar for that lovely video that, that you put together and sent out to everyone. That was so much fun and it was so welcome. And I was one who missed the deadline, but boy, it was fun to see everyone. And it just reminded me of what a great and very special group this is. So count me in. <laughs> and I will say Susie did not miss the deadline. I just am not a master editor and could not figure out how to get her video to work. So she had lovely things to say and very in keeping with the holiday spirit. And I apologize, Susie. I have to get a president with more skill, uh, computer skills next time. <laughs> I guess it's not Sally, so. <laughs> I'm giving another happy dollar because we've got such a great president. Oh, thanks, Sandy. And really, that was a fantastic video. It really was one of the better parts of the whole holiday season. Thank you. You're welcome. It was so fun to get everyone's submissions and, and compile them together. Lots of fun spirit there. Okay, well, if that wraps up our happy dollars for today, I would like to introduce District Governor Jessica Hain to give us an update on the Rotary International Convention and some other district news. Jessica. Thanks, Ashley. First of all, I have to say that I was really looking forward to coming to the Bloomington Club meeting today because you're all so amazing. And yesterday I attended a Rotary Club meeting and I will not tell you what club it was. Um, and it was fun. And there were five Rotarians on the call and no one had their camera on. And I will just tell you that I know that they did their best for me, but seeing all of your smiling faces makes me feel good. Thank you. Um, what a wonderful group. So a couple of things I wanted to share with you today. Um, if you haven't seen this yet in the district newsletter, we are putting together a very special Friends of the Rotary Foundation event on Friday, February 26th. And surprise, it's virtual, like everything. And um, But what makes it special at this time is that we are honoring the life and legacy of past district governor, Judy Bush. And I know many of you remember Judy Bush passed away this summer and left behind an insurance policy that gave a significant amount of money to the Rotary Foundation. And often we don't share this kind of detail with other Rotarians, right? We never hear about it. We never learn that people give gifts um, in their will or in a trust um, to the foundation we know about this one. And we are going to be honoring Judy on February 26th on Zoom at 7.30 at night. And not to spoil the surprise, but we are launching a very large matching campaign to match foundation dollars with points. I know your club is really good at taking advantage of matching campaigns. So I hope you come. I hope you get to see the stories that we're going to tell about Judy and her legacy and how you can set up your very own legacy with the Rotary Foundation. Um, but I'm very excited about it. And uh, I just love Zoom. And I can't believe that we're doing another thing on Zoom. Um, and it's going to be fantastic. Um, so please come and you'll have more information about that. But what Ashley asked me to talk about today and what I'm really excited to share is that as of January 5th, 2021, the Rotary International Convention in Taipei, Taiwan is still a go, believe it or not. And um, the Rotary International will be making a final decision in mid-February. And I 
can't tell you what I think about uh, the conference. I'm not sure if it's going to be in person or virtually, but I know that Rotary International learned a lot um, the last time they put together a virtual Rotary convention. And I think that in person or virtual, it will be excellent. I very much hope that we can travel to Taipei, Taiwan. I hope that enough of us have had a chance to get the vaccine so that we can feel comfortable traveling. But if Rotary International doesn't feel like that is a possibility, they will take the conference virtually. So I'm choosing to be an optimist and I miss traveling so much that I'm willing to believe it at this moment in time. I have registered, Brian has registered for the convention. Um, if you're curious, the early bird deadline has been extended. It's only $365 to attend. Um, hotel rooms, in case you haven't priced them, are wonderfully affordable. Um, they're between $75 and $163 a night for really amazing accommodations. And a flight is gonna run you about $1,500, which is always the most expensive part of traveling internationally. But if you're like me and you love to travel, I would encourage you to think about it. Um, and because we'd love to see a few more District 6580 Rotarians attending. Then again, I understand that we're in a weird year and I don't want you to travel if you don't feel safe. Um, but no matter what, what I can tell you is that I am super pleased to be presenting at the Taipei Convention. If it's in person or if it's virtual, I will be District 6580's first ever breakout presenter. Um, and it's gonna be exciting. Um, so my session is entitled, Keeping More Members with Stay Interviews, Advice from an HR Professional. <laughs> That's me. And um, I would like to come to your club, maybe in May, if you have time, to try out my presentation uh, and test it. So I'll be contacting Ashley and Sally and we'll see if I can get a time on the calendar. But if you decide to come to the convention, please come to my session so that I'm not alone. And um, I hope to see you there. I think that's all I had to say about that. Thank you for the time. Thank you so much, Jessica. That is so exciting. I cannot wait to hear this presentation from our premier HR manager in District 6580, Jess Kane. Um, and we'd be happy to have you try it out on us. We love to be guinea pigs. Okay, um, next up is the meat of our program presented by our MC Vaughn Welch and facilitator Sarah Laughlin. So take it away. Thank you very much, Ashley, and Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, so appreciate the time today as the, uh, the new chair of the Community Service Committee. And I really wanna thank Sarah for the, the, the spark behind today's presentation. And I'm gonna turn it over to her shortly and, and mostly hear from her, but just give you an overview. We really have um, three goals for the presentation today. First of all, I know many of you uh, know more about the community service aspects of Rotary than, than I do, but for other newcomers, we hope to just give you some, some overview. Uh, second, Sarah is going to take some time to celebrate everything that the club has done for community service, uh, despite the pandemic and other things. So you're going to hear a talk that she has given before, but intermixed with uh, some of the successes of this club. And then we're going to leave plenty of time for interactivity at the end, where we want to hear from you, your experiences with community service, good, maybe suggestions for making it uh, more accessible. And then also open the floor if you've got ideas, maybe you're looking for, for partners to put in a proposal for a project. And so have a little bit of a time to, to just uh, kick, kick that around. So with, with that uh, introduction, I'm going to uh, pass the virtual MC microphone over to Sarah Laughlin at this point and ask her to tell us a little bit more about the community service we've done and some of her pointers on what makes for good community service. Sarah? 
Thank you so much, Vaughn, and welcome to the Community Service Committee. For me, it's the it's the heart of Rotary, and um, our mission of service above self is carried out in the Community Service Committee. So, um, what I what I was when I was thinking about this, I realized we've been busy, even despite the pandemic. We've been busy doing things, um, doing community service, and. So I, I made a list and, you know, first on the list was the trash pickup on P, Pete Ellis Drive. And we somehow during the year noticed that our sign was there. It said that the Bloomington Rotary Club was sponsoring the trash pickup on this, on this road. We hadn't paid much attention to that for I don't know how long, but we had a great time going from McDonald's down to the post office and back picking up cigarette butts and this and that along the way. It wasn't very trashy to tell you the truth, but that didn't stop us from having a great conversation on the, on the way there and back. It was a beautiful day. Um, next in, in December, early December and kind of all through December, we, we did our traditional bell ringing for the Salvation Army, this time at Kroger's, which I have to say was a lot more fun than being at the mall. There was more traffic. It seemed like people were more generous we saw everybody we knew going by and um, we were able to get our groceries on the way out. Um, and what we know from what I noticed this year is that we've earned our own Salvation Army Rotary volunteer aprons. So we're no longer just Salvation Army branded, we're also Rotary branded now when we're ringing the bell. And Steve Moberly told us, I believe last year that we, um, our time, our scheduled time, brings in the most money on the Salvation Army uh, campaign every year of any group. So we didn't, we never knew that before. We never real, we had no idea what the impact of all those little quarters going into the slots were. Um, then we we packed in the middle of December, also early kind of early December, we packed 600 literacy backpacks at the United Way office. And that was, uh, we, we actually bought the backpacks and the, the books and, and materials that went inside them with, with our district grant. And that is $3,000 from our club, which we earned from the Bloomington Rotary Toast. It's our share of the toast proceeds matched by $3,000 from the district. Um, and so we worked on those for three days, even though there was a big snafu with the backpack printing, um, for the United Way, we were able to sort of get ahead of the get ahead of the curve and have all the materials ready when the backpacks finally arrived in mid morning on Friday, and then and then it went very quickly after that. Um, and and the fourth thing is really that I just wanted to talk a little bit about Teachers Warehouse. Most of you know something about Teachers Warehouse. You've been there for a visit or for, or to help volunteer. But it is an ongoing Bloomington Rotary project. It's our own 501c3 launched in 2004. We still, our club still covers the second Saturday of every month. That's this Saturday. We volunteer on the second Saturday of the month. We have four members of our club who are currently serving on the board. And we have many others who are part of the TW Movers group who helps us with large deliveries and donations and standing by to help whenever we need extra or, or to paint the lobby, which we did this fall. So as we were think, as I was thinking about these projects, I was keeping in mind the characteristics of a successful community service that I prepared for a district um, conference program a, few, a couple of years ago. And I said, okay, we're really nailing it here. So let me just quickly share those with you because I want you to think about those as you're thinking about what we should do next. So first of all, it should address a priority community need. If we want to make significant positive impact, it should be something important, not just a, you know, not a little bitty drop in the bucket, but, a, but something impactful. And, and so our district grant proposal process that we've used for the last few years really helps us with that because organizations that want to partner with us and receive that $6,000 and, and our volunteer time have to articulate why their need is important. Um, and, you know, of course we have members in our, from throughout the community that serve in our club and on the, on the committee. And so we have a pretty good idea of what, where the important needs are. And we often have a very hard time deciding which, 
one to fund because we have so many good proposals. The second thing is working with a unit of local government if it's at all possible. And for this, I would, I would point to our centennial tree planting when we discovered that not only would they give us the, the wholesale price on the trees, but they would actually dig the holes for us. And that was huge. Um, and the other thing that we've done with local government was delivering election um, equipment. Some of you will remember that, that was great fun. Um, and the third thing is calling out for volunteers beyond our club. We've actually gained members from our community service projects by inviting people that we think are, are uh, on our wavelengths to join us and actually see us in action. Um, the, one, the ones that I can think of are the Hoosier Hills Food Bank, um, where we pack food at the Hoosier Hills, Hoosier Hills Food Bank. We've sometimes had guests join us there. And our centennial, in our, um, our young professionals project where we did landscaping at the New Hope Family Shelter, we had a very large number of young professionals join us for that. Next, I think more than one source of money, leveraging our own money and our own time is makes it bigger, makes it more impactful. And, and for this, I would point to our district grant, which is a match with our own money, the city purchase, purchasing the trees for our centennial project, and lots of in-kind donations that we get along the way toward our project. Sometimes it's the publicity, um, being able to speak on the radio um, for the Rotary Toast or something like that, that is not, um, a cash donation, but an in-kind donation of, of talent or time. Um, next is sustainable results. And so we're looking for things when we're looking for community service that are not just one day only, it's not just an event, it's not just helping a few people right now, it's lasting. So I might point to the playground at the Boys and Girls Club, the new paint job at Martha's house, the centennial trees, which are flourishing there on the, whatever that street is in front of uh, Sherwood Oaks Christian Church and the and teacher's warehouse itself, which has spun itself off as a successful nonprofit now and continues to benefit teachers 16 years after it was launched. And the, the final thing is public awareness of Rotary before, during and after the, the event itself to connect the project with Rotary itself. And it's why we wear these hats and why we wear those aprons when we're ringing the bells and why we wear our pins and our sweatshirts and whatever other Rotary swag we, we can uh, round up because we, we're proud members of Rotary. We want people to see us in action. So that's just a quick wrap up of what's going on with our club and why we think it's you know, we've, we've thought about it in terms of making it as impactful as possible. Turning it back over to you, Vaughn. Thank you very much and great job, Sarah. Uh, so now we'd like to, to turn this into a little bit more interactive and I'll just um, give you some, some questions that Sarah and I thought of to throw out there. First of all, if you've had positive experiences, things with uh, community service through Rotary you'd like to share, we welcome those. If you've got suggestions for the, the community service in general, uh, something that would make it easier for you to participate in, we welcome that. And then um, ideas for things that we could do. And, and I'll, I'll nudge folks a little bit here. What we're look, maybe looking for is not just an idea put out, but it's something if you would like to do that maybe you're looking for um, help with, someone to brainstorm with, or maybe connections on. There's a lot of great connections in this group as we've heard. So with that, let me... Um, Open the open the floor. I will uh, jump in and just talk a little bit about how much um, the the whole opportunity of being able to volunteer has meant to me. It's very fulfilling, and I can say that just in walking in, particularly in teachers' warehouse, and watching uh, the teachers leave and the gratitude that they have for being able to come and and receive those materials. It's, it's very, very satisfying. And, and along with that, um, just the opportunity at, at like at Hoosier Hills <clears throat> to, to work with other Rotarians 
we uh, we get a little competitive even at times and how quickly we can pack those boxes. It's a lot of fun. Um, so I encourage you all to, to participate when you can. I'd like to piggyback on something that Sarah said, and that is um, in reference to her um, baseball hat that she um, magnificently donned. She has a future career as a model, I'm sure. Um, I have posted a couple of things on social media, particularly Facebook, and I get a lot of likes. Um, and it does the same thing as that hat. It helps promote Rotary and what we're doing. Good. I have some thoughts about long range something commitments that we try to identify. One of them is obviously we can't, I don't think we, we, we are in a position to address the big issue of the homeless. Although that's clearly something that we should all be thinking about how to, what's a long-term solution to that. But it's, but one thing I, I, I think about our children, infant, infant care. It's very difficult for, to find infant care, uh, daycare for kids, for babies. And I, if there's some way in which we could enhance the availability of infant care, that would be something that would be an ongoing wonderful thing to do. New Hope is the one organization that I know does that very well. And they, that plus Macam are the only day, daycare organizations that I can think of that deal with infants. But we might find some way to work with infants or or even it always seemed to me a good idea to have the interrelationship between older people and kids. If, if we could mentor young children, that might be a wonderful thing to do. Did you hear me? Yes, thank you, Charlotte. Yeah. I wanna um, jump on a couple comments that were made. Uh, one is when you think about leveraging other resources, I'm not sure if everyone knows that um, this is pre-pandemic, but the university authorized uh, people to take one day of employees to take one day of paid service per year. Um, so for instance, in our department, we had teams that went out and did, went to the Hoosier Hills Food Bank and helped them for a day or went out to Cascades Park and did some landscaping work for a day or things like that. So there may be some opportunities there. The other thing I'd say is, um, you know, building on some of what Marilyn said, when I do things like um, helping out with the United Way backpacks, I, I almost feel like it's cheating to call it service be, or to talk about service above self because I always walk out of there feeling so good and in such a good mood that I feel like it does as much or more for me as it does for uh, the project I'm working on. And I'll just jump in, Hank, to say that um, we had student affairs volunteers at Teachers Warehouse for the day, and we counted the books in the book room, 20,000 books, and inventoried them on that, on that day. So we, we really did mm -hmm. benefit from that, but I hadn't thought of them for other projects. I, I'm making a note. So I'd like to add something here. For many years, I served on the board of um, Area 10, Agency on Aging. And one of the pressing issues that we dealt with um, as an organization was combating the isolation and the loneliness that yes. many seniors um, feel. Uh, and of course, that's only exacerbated by the pandemic. I don't know what the solution is, but if we could keep that in mind as we think about resources, so many of those individuals would give anything to be able to serve, to volunteer, to do things. So maybe there are ways that we can look to engage them um, in their home or um, through subject matter or, or different things, but it is a, an audience willing and waiting to be asked. Uh, Jim, jumping on board with what Susie just said, some of our most Loyal and fabulous volunteers came to us from Area 10 Agency on Aging Referrals. Uh, at my sister's closet, there are so many ongoing service opportunities that can be done in 
individually, in pairs, um, in small groups. If anyone would like to uh, talk to me about these opportunities at my sister's closet, I would be so happy to talk with you because we really do have um, regular need on a weekly, daily basis. Let, let me go back to the mentoring issue. It seems to me there, one of the wonderful things that, that can happen is to match older people with younger people. And, and that sometimes, especially little kids just don't get the attention during the day that, they're, that they need after school or whatever. And just having somebody pay attention to them and talk to them, tell them the stories, listen to their stories, read stories to them. I, you know, I don't know what the nature would be, but I think that mentoring idea is a wonderful opportunity for both people. It's a two-sided win-win thing. And something that Rotary, I know in some places does well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will jump in and say thank you to everybody who's been volunteers this year, um, since some of us were not as comfortable getting out of the house or getting going other places. We doubly appreciate those who were willing to do that. Nice uh, hat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I. <laughs> I got that from one of those Rotary volunteer things. And uh, so I wanted to say that. The other thing I wanted to say as we're looking and thinking about potential projects is that the Fairview PTO of which I am a member as a volunteer uh, is working on a new outdoor classroom, the creation of an outdoor classroom because most of our local schools have an outdoor classroom they at this point do not, although we think we can change that in the next year. That sounds good. And most of the schools were using that outdoor classroom a lot this last fall and Fairview didn't have that opportunity. If I can just jump in again, these ideas are great. And um, I, what I wanna remind you of is that when we are looking for district grant projects, the, um, there's a proposal form to be filled out by the nonprofit or school or whoever it is that's applying for the money. They ha you have to have a rotary sponsor. So if those of you who have ideas like Glenda, you know that sounds like a great that sounds like a great district grant proposal. Um, and the competition is usually pretty fierce, but um, it the the timing for that it will be coming up. We'll be asking for those pretty soon, so it's not too soon to begin thinking about what would you you know do you have a group that you'd like to work with to make a proposal that would you know be a, have a high impact, meet a, a, a pressing need, and have a high impact. That's what we're looking for. Judy Schroeder has been patiently waiting with her hand held. Well, thank you so much. Um, I would be really interested in this time when we have realized how divided we are as a community and as a society in Rotary, looking at ways to bring people together to talk, to discuss. I think that I, I know that um, Aaron has been active in a group that's working with this, but I'm looking at a group that would be diverse in all of the meanings of diversity, putting that together and using some of the wisdom that this group possesses to try to get us talking to one another, to people to whom we haven't been talking. Thank you. Judy, this is Ann. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, and it's something that all of us could think about and work on together. Yeah. I don't know. Yes, we can hear you. It's good to hear you, Ann. Yes, we heard Ann. So speaking of the competition 
for the applicants. I know there are numerous applicants each year. And so I guess I'm curious as to know whether we might be interested or willing to look at those who didn't receive something in years past and see, first of all, if they might have fulfilled that need. And if not, if there's a way that we can um, consider some of those again, maybe, I don't know. Yes, of course. Um, I, I believe we have received, you know, re, re submissions mm -hmm. before from, you know, this a group sending it, sending a proposal forward again. One year we funded two. Yes, I remember. We such a great successful toast year and we had money left over and we decided that we could, you know, we could fund two. One of the, one of the problems that we have or one of the, dis, one of the sort of limiting factors, I guess I will say, is um, we frequently, we want, we want the, we want, you know, we have $6,000 to give you for your project, but we also want Rotarians to be involved. We also want a day of volunteering or, or, or an opportunity to volunteer in some way. And we've gotten, um, one year I think we had three proposals that were for trail maintenance, trail building and trail maintenance of one sort or another. And we looked at the demographics of our club and said, that's not us. We can't, we can't, we probably can't accomplish that. So when we, you know, if you look at the, at the, this year's project at the United Way, it was packing backpacks. That's something okay. easy, you know, okay. easy for us to do and, and, and accomplish. Um, we did have a great deal of fun painting. <laughs> I'm not sure we would ever get a job painting anywhere, but we, <laughs> we didn't spill any paint. That was the kind of the bottom line. Um, and um, we, we've, we have a great fun packing food at the Hoosier Hills Food Bank. And there's a lot of things we can do, but there also are some things that might be beyond our reach, maybe not beyond the reach of the IU um, volunteers for a day, but um, so I, you know, so keep that in mind when you, you know, think about our volunteers when you're submitting, working on your proposal, what would be reasonable for us to actually do? And you'll enhance your chances of getting chosen. And also the volunteers, I wonder if Hank knows whether or not it's um, all classes of employees there, like there's several classes, there's faculty, staff, professional, food service, yeah. certain maintenance. Is it everyone or is it just a few? It's everyone. Okay. Well, I, to be honest, I'm not certain about faculty, but their schedules tend to be pretty flexible. Right. It's, it's meant to be everyone. Okay. Thank you. So you, there may be folks with special skills like electricians or things. Yeah. Like that. You, yeah. Yeah. You I'm know, thinking of the up. heating, cooling, all that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, what keeps, what has kept you from volunteering? Those of you who have not been able to volunteer, what has, what has kept you from participating? This is Liz. I'll just say kids <laughs> and other obligations. Um, so sometimes work hours are actually better for me because I have greater flexibility, but once the work day is done and you go home or you have weekend activities, that just makes it harder. Yeah. Although I, I see Jessica, Jessica Hain here who has children and brings them along for volunteering opportunities. So maybe I should rethink that. This is Ann. May I make a comment? <laughs> In Bloomington, so many times volunteering is mainly done by women and girls. Men have a more difficult time giving their time and efforts for free for various reasons. Um, I remember several years ago, I worked on a project where we tried to get more men involved, but we had a terrible time with the language. Uh, nobody was swearing, don't get me wrong. Um, we called it men to boys. And it was an effort to get men involved in mentoring young men, boys. Uh, because in so many young boys' lives, men are missing. 
uh, for various reasons. And um, I think that's a part of volunteering in Bloomington particularly, where we need a lot more men involved. And uh, I don't know how to do that. I'm just throwing it out as a thought and maybe somebody can pick up on something that would help. I mean, we have Boy Scouts, we have all kinds of activities like that, but um, so many adults aren't equipped to do scouting uh, for various reasons. But I think we need to, I think it's an area that needs thoughtful people and um, some work. Thank you. Well, it seems to me the, the mentoring idea is, is, if we could figure that out, it would be good. Because I think you're absolutely right. There are a lot of kids, of, especially younger, but it gets more difficult as the boys get older. But having a, having a match of somebody mm -hmm. and working that out in the proper way. And I know that happens some places and it does well. So I don't know, we working with the Boys and Girls Club perhaps? Is there any way we can do a project using IU art students? Um, well, I don't have anything specific in mind. I'm just thinking out loud. Including musicians. Yeah, I mean, I, I can speak to that. I know that in the Jacobs School of Music, there are student organizations. There's one in particular that I'm thinking of called Classical Connections yeah. that is committed to taking performances into the community um, and, you know, I can see a lot of intersection potentially with um, students in the school and as well as faculty and staff who want to get out and do things um, on a musical level. So I'd be happy to help um, develop ideas and, and, and connect, connect the dots. Doesn't, doesn't Fairview have some sort of a program? Fairview you... has a lot, of, a lot of arts programs, yeah. Um, yes. There's a... There's a there's a program for strings that's been run by Brenda yeah. Brenner for many, many years. But then there are other programs that have been developed over the last five years as well that are very impressive at Fairview. Mm -hmm. Years ago, this is Anne. I was a student of, um, of an organist at IU, Dr. Regatz. And he took me on as a young person, uh, as a mentor. And um, we used a church on the east side of Bloomington, who and they were willing to allow me to use their organ. And um, I'll never forget the day I was asked to play the IU Auditorium uh, no, to be able that. to <laughs> push your hands on the keyboard of a pipe organ is an extraordinary feeling. Um, it's much, in my opinion, Electric organs should never have been designed. Pipe organs are the way to go. Yeah. Because you have so much volume and so much ability to interpret music and different sounds. And when those pipes start pumping air at the IU Auditorium, you can almost feel it in your feet when those pumps come on because it is so powerful. Uh, but it is yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt and thank you for the, the story, but looking at the clock, I see it's about time for me to turn things back over to, to Ashley. So I just want <laughs> so I just wanted to thank everybody for their inputs. I know I took a lot of notes and I'll thank Sarah again for preparing her her remarks. And I think Ashley has reconnected at this point. Yes, I'm here. Okay, I am gonna turn the floor back over to you. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks so Thank much, Ron. Nice hat. Nice hat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much to Vaughn and Sarah for uh, that wonderful facilitation of our uh, ideas for volunteering. It is something very close to my heart, certainly. And I appreciate everyone that's come out, uh, even with all the challenges this year to support our efforts. And let's not forget, we also did Community Kitchen 
and Helping Hands this year. I wanted to make sure we remembered those. Those were really fun back in August and ongoing. Um, before we close out today, I want to quickly choose our new quarterly recognition speaker from my hat here. And it is Shalom Center. So Shalom Center will be receiving our um, speaker gift recipient for this quarter. And there you go. Shouldn't Saturday. you mention, shouldn't you mention that its name now is Beacon? Beacon. It's now Beacon. We will make sure to make note of that. Um, but okay. previously known as Shalom Center under the umbrella of Beacon. Thank you, Tim. Okay, Sally, will you tell us about next week's program? Yes, January 12th, next week on Zoom. Our program will be Graham Honecker and Jerry Logan talking about their book, The Cinderella St Strategy, The Game Plan Behind Butler University's Rise to Prominence. And we have Lauren Snyder to thank for that. Thank you so much. That'll be exciting. Okay. Um, Michael, can you please share our four-way test graphic so that we can say that together to close our meeting? Of the things we think, say, say first, first, is it true? Second, 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 is it fair to all Third, will it build, will it build, build good and better projects? Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. This our program today. Happy and if anyone has any additional comments to make, you can do so now. I guess I might want to know.